Well, there's nothing like a good intro to kick an episode off. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Welcome back to another episode in the Valeria realm. We're playing Minecraft Bedrock on the PS4 and I think it's about time that we upgraded our storage system. So the first thing that we're going to be doing, obviously, is to clear out an area behind here. Um, I need to dig this out. I think it needs to be something like 32 blocks deep, 13 blocks wide, and uh, 8 blocks high, maybe. Um, and of course, that means moving Mendelssohn again. Um, sorry, mate. I know you've been moved around quite a few times over the last few episodes. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll put you somewhere nice, Mendelssohn. Don't you worry. I don't know where exactly. I mean, should I put him back over here? Maybe, maybe we can actually make a start on the villager trading hall down there. My only concern with building a villager trading hall too close to the base is that if the, you know if we get the um, whichever one it is that makes you get raids uh, to to make you start raids. Bad omen. It's called bad omen. If we get that going on, um, there's so many nooks and crannies that they could spawn in during a raid. I don't know how to protect the villagers best. Um, to be honest. I've, but it would be handy just to have a village trading hall here. But then if I'm going to do that, then I need to turn this guy and Mendelssohn into um, breeding villagers. They need to get it on. and Or I can pull over some villagers from the industrial district, which means pulling them through the never. So I've got some options in that sense. I just can't make my mind up and I'm really worried about that raid situation. Which is why I'm thinking actually the village trading hall should go over where the industrial district Neverport is in that area there somehow some way but hey maybe we'll take a look at that later for now let's just get this storage done i'm going to get mendelssohn moved and then begin digging now you may have noticed already that there is a significant difference between the quality of audio recordings from clip to clip um, and there's a very simple reason for that when i was recording these video clips um, and doing the audio live with it i was using a crap mic so i apologize in advance for that it's going to be around for probably the next four episodes but fear not i have in fact ordered a new mic so the fifth episode from this one should be should be better quality Right, tracks are in place, and they should go to the right place. That creep up? No, it's just bamboo. Um, and we should just be able to jump over here and push him off. Off you go. All right. Now, hopefully, you'll just stay there. You've got a bed behind you. Um, we need to put your lectern back, like so. You gonna link to that? Yeah, there you go. It's really dodgy doing rails because it's one little hit to pick the rails up, but yeah, that can happen with the <laughs> with the uh, efficiency four or five efficiency four that I've got. Yeah, it just destroys the block underneath so easily. Well, I seriously considered going for a different design for this arm of the storage area, but I don't know, this this works well and I kind of want it to, to conform, to be honest, and we've got this archway going on here, um, and now we've got this kind of, oh, I missed one here by the looks of it, there we go, um, yeah, so we've got this kind of double archway that goes here, you've got this line along here, and then you've got this one that goes around the inside here. And now we've got the same thing on this side as well, we've got this kind of double archway, and it just means that everything behind here now, I can just get on and dig out, and we should end up with a similar sort of space as what we've got here.
Well, I'm making good progress. I'm not quite ready to show you yet because uh, it's not quite done in terms of hollowing it out. But, yeah, apparently I've made some friends. Look at this guy in the boat. Just chilling there. Waiting to explode as soon as I go down this set of uh, scaffolding. So, we have a hole. We have this space. It's 13 wide, 8 high, and 32 deep. And in here, we should be able to fit another bank of auto-sorting chests. Much the same as we have over in this arm. Um, and I'll hook it all up with the on the same hopper line as well, so that... Um, you know, you still only have to use the one input chest and still end up with the same um, overflow chest, which are obviously back here. Um, yeah, so let me kind of get to work in terms of planning the layout a little bit because I've actually forgotten how this one went. I think I might have to refer to the original tutorial, which is a shulker craft tutorial, I do believe. Um, yes, yeah, so let me get the, the planning out done and then I'll come back to you with an update as soon as I have one. The other thing that occurs to me is we're going to need spruce wood for uh, the de decoration, but also we're going to be making a hell of a lot more chests, so we're going to need those. Oh, and we're going to need hoppers as well. So if there's eight planks to a single chest, there's 16 to a double chest, there's... I will get there eventually. So we need 12 and a half stacks just for the chests alone. Then we need the hoppers that have got to go with it. So. I don't know, I reckon maybe 20 stacks should do it, so I think, I mean we could just use the amazing tree farm, um, but I'm wondering if I've got oak saplings, have I got spru okay I've got enough spruce saplings that I could just go out there, plant some, bone mill them, and then dig them down that way, and I wonder if that'll actually be quicker, because obviously the spruce trees grow two by two or can grow two by two, whereas the uh, oak trees and acacia and so on and so forth don't. Um, so yeah, I need bone meal, that's why I'm here. A bit of bone meal, ooh, that's not looking great. I might need to spend some time AFKing at the Skelly Farm for a little while. I might do that a bit later, but for now, alright, I can work with that. That's two and a bit stacks. All right, yeah, let me go and get some wood and I'll come and check in with you after that. So my inventory is pretty much full, um, and some of it was stuff that I don't want. And I kept flying back to the base in order to sleep, and I thought, well, why don't you just put a bed up on the top of this hill here? And then I thought, well, you might as well have some stairs leading up to the bed at the top of the hill here. And then I thought, well, I might as well just make it a little outpost of sorts and build a little hut. I mean, it's not like, we, not like we're short on wood or anything, is it? So now we've got some steps leading up, which should save on food. This is obviously, well... I suppose this is where the front garden would be. I mean, are we going that deep into it? I don't know. Let's build the actual house back here somewhere. Now, we don't want the walls to be made out of the same thing as the floor. But I also don't want to just make them out of logs because that would be very expensive. Um, there's something else that you can do with logs that I've never really done before. And it's not stripped. It's, ah, it's this stuff. Ah, for the, that's even less efficient though, isn't it? Look at that. So you take, it takes four logs to give you three spruce wood. So you lose a log. Hmm. What if we keep the pillars 
as just the spruce logs in their normal form and then use stripped logs to build up the walls. Alright, I might be onto something here. This is how I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to place in that and then place all of these on there and then dig them out after. I'm still going to lose them and it's still a pain in the ass to get to that one. I might just have to accept that I'm going to lose them. Alright. Well, I'm going to crack on with this. I'll come back to you with an update once I have one. I really didn't intend for this to be an actual project, but it's turning into an actual project. So I wonder if you can see it from here. No, not quite. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of turning into a lumberjack slash fisherman's cottage um, or, or cabin. And I think that, you know, maybe these guys would prefer it over there, um, you know, more nature. Or maybe one of them would. Um, to it. Let's take Jasper with us, shall we? Come on, mate. You're coming with me. Let's go to your new home. And I think this is all that I'm going to do to this for now. This turned out to be a much bigger project than I originally planned. Um, I'm going to carry on taking these trees down, obviously. But first, if I just... Uh, show you. Uh, oh, I've got my rockets in the wrong hand, haven't I? Fool. Let's try again. This is what I've built. And I'll be honest, I hate the shape and I don't like how flat it is at the back and at the front um, and the sides for that matter. So I need to do something something extra with it. But it's basically just a little log cabin there for a little fishing area out the back here. I think this could be good for I've got Jasper over there as well, which is good. So you come up these steps, uh, you get this front garden type situation, which, yeah, I like this sort of thing. But this looks very flat. I need to do something there. Leave your suggestions down in the comments. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, a little fire so that we can sit here and, I don't know, cook stuff, whatever that might be. Uh, and then you go and you've just got this open area here. Um, I'll just put these here temporarily. And then, like, the bedroom area, which you get to up this ladder. And then, obviously, the bed. Um, and I thought these leaves were a nice touch, but it does feel a, a little bit um, claustrophobic up here, if I'm being completely honest. And then, yeah, like I say, out the back here, there's Jasper. And here is the fishing balcony type thing. So I'll move all the fishing rods from that fishing hut over here. And then, yeah, all you've got to do is do that. And then you can fish down there and hopefully get some good good stuff, good loot. So uh, yeah, now I'm going to sleep because the sun is setting and I think we will carry on grabbing the wood because I kind of used up a lot of it building this and I really didn't expect to. So yeah, going to have to going to have to do that next. But for now, we've got some work to do. So in the last episode, we dug out this massive space and now I'm just gonna go in and mark out all of the bays that the chests are gonna be going into. So we're working on uh, another arm, a second arm to our auto sorting system. Um, and you know, digging out that amount of space and gathering enough wood for all of the chests and such, that was quite a key um, quite a key part of the process and unfortunately I couldn't just skip over it. We got a nice little log cabin built in the meantime as well which is quite nice but now we can actually start work. So I'm going to get these marks out um, and then just kind of see how it looks and whether or not we want to keep the same you know, design interior as the other one that we've got in order to keep it all uniform or we want to mix it up a little bit. And it occurs to me now I've got too many spaces at the end. That's five, one, two, three, four, 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 five. So have I, I have dug back too far. I've got two extra blocks at the end. I suppose that's not the end of the world, is it really? I mean, we can, we can do something with that two extra blocks if nothing else just gives us a bit more space to work with. Um, so yeah, let me get these banks marked out and see where we want to go from there.
and with these last few torches that is the general layout for what we're going for in terms of spacing so yeah let's build an auto sorter sorry guys here comes the pre-recorded crappy audio that i was talking about earlier so i've got the basic layout in place um, it looks something like this i still need to put the the walls in in between and then i can start to actually put the chests in um, which is the part i think that will take up most of the wood stocks that we have and that's where we're going to figure out whether or not we'll run out of wood or if we have enough to actually complete the projects i'm not sure I really, yeah, I mean it's possible that that's enough, it is possible, I just, I feel like I never have enough materials when I start these projects and I always end up going back and having to um, get some more of something and it's normally just a piddly little amount of it, but just not quite enough to finish the project. So yeah, let me, um, let me crack on with this and I'll come back to you once I've got a bit more of it in place. So, I'm just, yeah, just finishing off the kind of main frame for what we're doing. I realise that I dug back but, uh, too far by two blocks, but hey-ho, it is what it is. Um, and there was one part of the tutorial that I'm following, which is, I say, is a Shulkercraft one, where they say, on this level here, I should be putting half slabs and... I'm not, and this is because I took, when I did it on the other arm, I took these out because with the half slabs there, you can't open, oh, you can't open these top chests, top, top chests, um, and that, I mean, yeah, it's not quite what I was after, I want to be able to access all of the chests, otherwise that's literally half of your chest, because you'll lose all of the top chests, or access to all of the top chests on this row, this row, and on the two rows that are coming above, but uh, both the top rows will be inaccessible, so, yeah, I'm going to leave those there, I don't think it's kind of made any difference to the actual design, except for the fact that you can see a bit of the redstone and the hoppers through there, and other than that, it doesn't have much of an effect and to be honest I quite like seeing the redstone behind it it, um, it reminds me that although this looks kind of um, hobbity like it's something out of the Shire there is some intelligent happenings going on in the background so yeah I'm going to keep that kind of view which obviously will be through there um, I'm going to keep that in but now what I'm doing is just building these up by um, four more blocks um, just to as I say finish off the frame um, once I've done that, then I can get the top row of chests in, which is very expensive. So I burnt through, let's have a look, I burnt through, well that's what I've got left. Of those two rows that I had, that's what I've got left. So I've got a few chests on me, like I've got 64 there, 17 there. But don't forget I need to make hoppers as well, so I might have enough to do the chests and then I'm going to have to go out and collect some more wood because, yeah, we're going to need to do hoppers each hopper is a chest and that turns out to be quite expensive and as predicted i have indeed run out of wood so i'm just going to set up the scaffolding um, so that i can access all of the areas that i need to access i think i'm going to raise the roof by one as well um, and then yeah if we just have a quick look oh look that creeper's back hello mate um yeah if we just have a quick look in the shulker box then you can see that it's empty. There is very little wood left. All I've got is what's on me. So definitely gonna need some more, so I'm off out to go wood chopping. 10 minutes of wood chopping later. Okay, quick progress update. So I have, yeah, done quite a bit. I'm just putting in these last uh, bars here which need to go across like so and then these need to go in. Uh, all of the chests are now in place. Just as a side note, so all of the wood is pretty much done. I've got to put some trap doors, got to put some trap doors in there. But other than that, all of the wood is pretty much done except for, as I say, the hoppers. So, considering that I didn't take the hoppers into account when I did the math in the first place, 
I've not done too bad in terms of guesstimating that. I mean, I've got 34 actual logs left, but that's all that I've got left in terms of um, wood variants. So I'm gonna have to go and grab some more wood, obviously, but yay me, pretty proud. Well, there's nothing quite like sitting around the campfire after a hard day of lumberjacking. I do feel like I've been quite the lumberjack this particular episode, gathering lots of wood. Um, yeah, because it's just it's just such a wood intensive project this one just all of the decorations are, are wood i'm just so pleased that it's all spruce wood and everything is variants of spruce wood because spruce wood is just so easy to get compared to the others perhaps jungle wood might be up there as well because that's kind of two by two all the way up um but yeah even like the dark oak i said that earlier about it being uh, you know dark oak being one of those ones that's easy to get it is relative to the others but it still has branches coming off of it and you've got to get through the leaves and all that the spruce wood tree just straight to the top dig down in a circle and you are pretty much done so yeah i'm going to spend the night here and then i'll head back because i've got a fair amount of wood um of spruce wood i think i'm doing all right i've got trees planted so they're growing and i've come away with even more spruce saplings so yeah i'm gonna leave the the, the lumberjacking here for the night and yeah crack on with the rest of the projects in the morning i think back to some decent quality audio so I'm just gonna pop these in here just to kind of finish it off and I believe that with this layer of stone bricks done I think that kind of completes the aesthetics of this particular room all of the chests are in place all of the wood logs are in place um, all of the uh, crafting tables are in place as you can see here and I'm literally just filling in the last little bits. I can't believe that we're, we're pretty much done from an aesthetic perspective. Obviously there's still all of the redstone to do but this is looking pretty suave. You may have noticed that I've left this as spruce logs as opposed to stripping it like that one. Yes I'm sorry we're back to that pre-recorded poor quality audio. And that's simply because as far as I'm aware, once you've done that, you can't turn it back. You can mine the log, obviously, uh, but you can't um, turn it back into this sort of log. And I want to see, I want to leave it and just see how it sits when I run past it or walk through it or whatever. Um, it might be good just to, you know, identify each one. I'm sure it could be quite easy just to be in here and not really, you know, get a bit disorientated, not really know which one of these you were in. So if I leave these there, that might be a good way to mark them as well. Um, yeah, I'm just going to see and I can always strip them later on um, and go from there. But now it's time to put the hoppers in place and I'm really not looking forward to this bit. But I'm hoping with the amount of spruce wood that I have here and I've got, I think I've got some more iron over at the iron farm. But as long as we've got more wood than iron, oh yeah, not a problem, we're fine. Alright, hopper time. So as you can see here, I've got two and a bit stacks, well three and a bit stacks of hoppers actually, and I'm hoping that that should be enough to do one side of this. So uh, I think there's 400 altogether, there's 200 on each side, um, so I might be just a little bit short, but yeah, I'm just going to whack these in um, bit by bit and just kind of see how many short we are. Oh, we might have enough, we might not, I don't, I just don't know. Right, just while this time lapse is running, I don't want to bang on about it, but this audio quality thing is really bugging me because it's almost very much a shame, almost shameful when I'm doing this um, editing and I've got two completely different types of audio going on. Um, it really is only going to last for these pre-recorded episodes, which is, this is the, the second of four, so there's this one and then two more episodes. And then I promise you, the audio quality will get a whole lot better. I even considered doing some um, like voiceovers over the original audio that I recorded but instead I'm just doing the voiceovers for these blank clips where I haven't recorded any audio because it just didn't work I couldn't separate my voice out away from it um, but if you look here there you go I did have enough hoppers to do a hopper for each and every one of these chests so they are now ready to be hooked up to the redstone system but for that I am going to need more hoppers and that means more wood so here I am again lumberjacking once again. I'm gonna fly straight through this hole, yes! <laughs> Brilliant landing! 
Okay, I've just spent a lot of time and quite a few resources. Went through so many sticks, went through so many logs to make so many sticks for the redstone components that we're going to need for this arm of the sorting system. Now, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit worried about the hopper um, flow, if you like. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work, so I can't quite remember. So I think, right, so you put it in this chest, it goes through these hoppers into this uh, dropper which drops it into this item elevator which pushes it up so it starts in the top left and then the hopper line wraps all the way around there then drops down then comes all the way back and ends up here what's the easiest way to do that it wouldn't be to move the items from here over to there would it no it would be okay so it's got to be here so it goes along the top first so then there, okay, if I break it at the top there, and then have that hopper line running all the way around the top here, all the way around there, around the back, all the way around the back of there, drop here, and then come back round, we should then find ourselves here, which will then push all the way around the bottom there, and end up in exactly the same chest that we have at the moment. Ah, alright, that makes a lot more sense in my head now. I'm glad that I talked that one out. Um, cool. Um, now, when it comes to the actual... I haven't got any scaffolding. Yes. When it comes to the actual breaking through, I think we're going to have to come around the back here. And I think just... I should imagine that we can get away with doing this and not breaking anything. Yes, okay. Alright, that's, that's helpful. Uh, let's just clear it up a bit. This might as well be open. It's not like there's going to be any any of this on show. And it may help us when it comes to this piston door, actually. I think I can get... Yeah, you can fit the redstone in there, surely. I mean... It, would I... Yeah, I'm, look, let's not get distracted. One thing at a time. So that's the top hopper line. And... If we look, I believe you'll be able to tell which direction it's going in. Yeah, right, and then that comes down here. So I'm saying, instead of coming down here, let's get rid of... There's nothing running through it, is it? No. Let's get rid of... And do it from the bottom first, that one. Cool. Let's get rid of those for now. Drop there, pick those up. Cool. Okay. Now instead it will feed across to them and this is directly over. Ah oh, right, these are the hoppers that we've already put in. So these top ones need another input. These bottom ones don't. Okay. So the bottom ones So obviously we're gonna need the hoppers that feed into there. Uh I know that they don't actually obviously feed into that comparator, that's just what they look like, they look like they're pointing into that comparator. And then, I don't quite understand what's going on here. Oh, is this the line coming back? Ah, I see, right, okay. So that's the line coming back. Yeah, because it, that, this one would have fed into that one. Right, so that's where we want to get into. So that's going to be our input when we come back this way. Come on. There we go, right. Oh, Jesus. Let's try that again. Yes, yeah, so that's our inputs. Then our output. So we need to figure out where we're going to pull our, our output from. I just want to get the lining up of these right. So on this top one. So that's a chest and that's a chest. Then there's one more. Okay, so one more row going down. And then a row going into those. And then that's what has the comparator off the back of it. Which then has the hopper going into the comparator, which then has the hopper line above it. Jesus, right. Let me go and see if I can recreate this, and I'll come back and let you know when that's done on this side. And we have a problem. So, I figured this bit out, so I'm just basically doing one slice just to see how the dimensions are going to work out and actually fitting it in place. And on this corner, we're going to have a problem because, other than the fact that we've got to dig out more here, which is fine, I don't mind doing that. Here, so you have this hopper 
feeding into here which feeds into here but this is the hopper that on top of it has the hopper that faces into the comparator so our comparator does in fact start there uh, let me just actually put this in place there cool and then you have is it two or three lots of redstone hang on ah no I may have just made a mistake there oh that's not good uh, let's put that there and that there right that resolves that have I just broken the system uh, I'm scared to look all right later um right no in that case it's not we don't have a problem I was completely mistaken so you can go you can go and you there with kind of one hang on yeah that there and then one there and then it goes redstone torch repeater and that completes that line and these two shouldn't hook up which they're not good and then when I put too many items in here it will fill through so let's right so this is the one where you put those in there and then this needs to be up to 41 like so and then for every one that we put in yeah the way this works is it measures how many items are in here and gives out an equivalent signal strength which gets picked up by the comparator and when there's 41 items plus your four placeholder items it puts out a signal strength not quite strong enough to turn off this redstone torch so this redstone torch is on it gets turned off by this repeater here which gets powered by this redstone when this comparator puts out a strong enough signal which you can see it's not at the moment but then once you put in a few more items so if I put four more in there it should start to filter through which it isn't it's turned off this torch I'm not in the best place really for you to be able to see it it's turned up it did turn off that torch I say with a few more it's a terrible demonstration right 15 going in so it's a 56 so now that torch is off and until it gets down to 41 again in that first slot which it just did because there is that turning on and that torch powers uh, I believe it's this block which then locks that hopper or that torch I'll be honest I'm not 100% sure what that torch powers I think it powers this block which then locks this hopper which stops anything from passing through um, but I could be wrong. All I know is this is the design. This is the one that I'm going with. It's exactly the same as the one that's here. And where I thought there was a problem, there wasn't. So, uh, yeah, sorry to waste your time. I'll come back with a good update soon. Let's kick this episode off straight away, just cracking on, picking up where we left off from before. Welcome back to another episode, we're back on the Valeria Realm, we're playing on PS4 and we're playing the Bedrock version of Minecraft. And at the moment, all that I'm doing is continuing on from the auto sorter that we built in the last episode, but we didn't get around to actually doing the redstone for it, so that is what we're going to do here. And I'm trying something um, a little bit different in terms of how I set the redstone up, not in terms of the redstone itself, but in terms of using specific blocks to identify what the redstone actually goes on as you can see over here on the left I've used for the most part cobblestone um, and I've got just so much never rack I figured well we might as well use it for something so I'm just going to use it as kind of the template or the the structure or the frame or whatever you want to call it for the redstone elements of this particular um, sorter Now this is a fairly repetitive task, so I'm just going to jump straight into a time lapse.
So that's the majority of it built up and I think that we're pretty close to being done here, at least for the top section of this half. I'm just putting in these hoppers here, um, which annoyingly have to go against that one pixel space at the back of the comparator here. But yeah, once you kind of get onto the, the rhythm, it's fine. The biggest concern is that you, well, I say you, is that I accidentally aim at the hopper below instead of at the comparator. I don't know if that will break it or not, but I'm not going to take that risk. So I'm just being as careful as I can. I'd rather place it over the top of the comparator if I can than over the top of the hopper and not know that it's facing into the hopper. So yeah, now that I've got all of that in place, I can now look at running the main hopper line, the main item transfer line across all of these and all the way around to the back to the other side as well. And hopefully we'll end up with a system that just works. That's really what I'm going for here. I just want a system that just works and feeds into the entire um, chest system without having to worry about items getting lost or items stacking up in the wrong places or whatever the case may be. So if I think about it, this here is going to be where the hopper's going to come across so it'll feed into there. Is that right? Yeah, and then feed in the back and then I've just got to place this line of hoppers and then figure out where this is going to come across. And I think it should literally be as easy as just connecting these two up. So if I just work my way across here, uh, yeah, that should work, and then come across here, and yeah, then it's just that one there in the corner that kind of needs to be put in place. But I tell you what, I'm not gonna put it in place just yet, because I don't want anything feeding into the new system um, I could just not put anything in the chest if I'm being completely honest, but I would rather just not take the risk and not let anything feed into the new system until all of the placeholder items are in place um, and we've allocated chests to specific items. And now, unfortunately, we have to go back to the crappy audio recordings that were recorded live when I actually filmed this particular gaming session. Apologies about that. I promise you it will change in upcoming episodes. This is such a big job. Like... This is such a big job. All right, I didn't need to go quite so wide out the back, but it, you know, better to have more space than not enough. Um, but yeah, if you, all of this has been for the top half of one side. I've not even done this bottom bit yet. That's just the top half of one side. And over here, I've not even dug this side out yet. There is so much to do. Hopper wise, I mean, I've got 14 to 54. Just over a stack left, and I've only done the top half of one side. Wow. So I need three of those again, basically, give or take a stack. All right, repeaters and comparators, I'm well prepped for. I've got enough chest there to make a dent in the hopper requirements. Certainly got enough never rack, um, and the rest of it we're kind of done with anyway. Okay, it's just, yeah, what a big job. I've kind of hit a, hit a point now where I almost regret starting this project. I suppose we could, if I walk away now, this is the genuine problem, if I walk away now, I'm not gonna get back to it for a very, very long time. We'll have a half complete system. So, do you know what? I might just power on, just get it done. I might not even do any progress updates. I might just get it done and then come back to you when Maybe when the lower half is done as well, or when I'm halfway through all together, or maybe just at the end, I don't know. We'll see. Let's see what the next clip is. I so just wanted to be able to come back in the next clip and go, ta-da, it's done. Um, but it's not. I've run out of iron for hoppers, and I'm hoping that we're gonna have enough in here that, ah, uh, uh, I don't understand. This, is it confused? It's meant to be producing iron. I'm sure I've seen golems coming and burning. Right, here we go, quick test. Oh, look how sloppy this redstone is. Ooh. All right, at least it works, I suppose. Um, yeah, can we, uh, can we spawn a golem, please? And then we'll just know that this is working, because that's a little bit concerning. It now occurs to me that I can't remember the last time I saw the iron farm working. Could it be that our villagers have been turned into witches or zombies. I mean, they're pretty far out of the way. A lightning strike would have done it. Oh, 
Even though I've got a slab over there, and they all sound healthy enough. <laughs> Look at that little lead's going. <laughs> oh dear. Right, no, that should be fine then. So, where are my golems? Oh, we're fine. We have a winner. Oh, I was worried there. I thought maybe one of the recent updates had broken the farm or something. Oh, thank God. Right, let's just make sure the next step then, transportation, is working. Yes, okay. Wow, was that five bits of iron? That's pretty good. So, now if we have a look down here. Okay, so there is iron coming in. So where the hell is the rest of it then? Ah... Why is it in that top chest and they're not filtered down to the bottom? That's a bit strange. Okay. Problem solved. We have iron. Not a problem. Everything is good. Everything is wonderful in the world. Back to it. I think if I put this hopper here, that's... That's like the whole chain done, isn't it? Oh, I don't want to get overexcited about this, but so far it's looking really good. Yes. 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 Uh, yes, that is right. Oh, <laughs> can't believe it might actually be done and that should feed from over here which means that the last one that I need to connect is this one and if I put this in place then the ring is complete so items will now go around the entire system now whether or not they get sorted is a different question because I haven't done this bit yet um, where I put the placeholder items in. So I'm going to do that now, but that also means actually allocating items to chests. I know that we need more space, I just don't know how to organize it at the moment. Oh, we're going to need item frames. I'm going to go and put item frames in here. Um, I've left these at, uh, lower blocks as they are because, like over here, I've got them in sort of sections. So this is the stone section, so it has stone. Uh, this is also kind of stone, so it has stone. This is the wood section, so it's got wood. This is the never section, so it's got never. You get the idea. Um, leaves, because this was originally um, like a green and plants and that, but there, what, there was just too many items for the number of chests that I had here. Um, and I needed space for things like slabs and stones, uh, stone brick stairs and that sort of thing. So, okay, yeah, slime for like mob drops. I'll get the item frames in place, and then I'll kind of try and decide what items are gonna go in there. I spent a long time trying to decide what items were going to go where. It's a little bit boring, so I've cut it out. But there was this little gem in there. The different end types. Um, what's purple? Is that what that's called? Purple? I don't even know. I've been waffling on for ages now. Let me let me get to work on that and having a bit of a sort out of my head. And I'll come back when I've got something to a report. Now for some good old-fashioned murder. Well, I've been working on this pretty much all day and it's starting to frazzle my brain now. I'm trying to figure out what I you know, what I want to do in terms of organising items. So I'm thinking this could be like an ocean monument um, section. But like I say, my brain is just fried from doing the, the redstone and working out all of the uh, hoppers and such, um, gathering all of the wood. So we're going to keep it in the same episode, I hope. Um, but I think I'll get you know, get some time away from Minecraft. I've been playing a lot of Minecraft today. Um, come back to it with a fresh set of eyes tomorrow, and then maybe it'll make sense the way that this one made sense to me when I initially made it. Um, so yeah, next time you see me, it'll be a new day for me. Good morning, I feel fresh. Right, let's get on with it. All right, very quick progress update. I'm over halfway done now. Uh, so I've got a section here which is for the monument type uh, blocks along the top and then I've got the end variants down the bottom. This is all monument types. This is prismarine, prismarine stairs, prismarine slabs. 
I recorded myself going through every single item, which took a long time, so I'm just going to speed that up and jump right to the end. And then just some seeds. Uh, also, I don't think I've got storage for them. And then that leaves me with one, two, three, four more banks. Ah, I knew I was tired yesterday. Look, I've not put the redstone in. I've done it on this level. What a stupid boy. I've not put the redstone in on this level. Right, let's go grab some redstone and fix that pretty sharpish. There we go. Now that the redstone's in place, items are actually flowing through. So if I just check these, yes and yes. Awesome. Do you know what? I think I might just lock them off. So I need, how many do I need? I need one, two, three, uh, and then another 10, another 10, and another 10. So 33 um, filler blocks. And I'm just coming onto the last bank now. Once these are in place, I can say that this project is complete and the way that we're going to test it is just to run all of the miscellaneous items through the system uh, yeah, and just see, see where we end up in terms of things slotting into the right place. I think the first thing that I'd like to do, because this is still going to be the end, so the first thing that I'd like to do is just test this by, okay 19, so we're going to put 19 into the system and then we're going to see if those 19 end up back here and if they do end up back here then that means that they'll have skipped over every other slot so they've gone all the way around there all the way around here staying at the top they would then go all the way around this section all the way around around the top there down here and then back around these chests and then back around these chests and then end up back here now before that took about a minute but that was when it was just this arm so with both arms i reckon that'll take a couple of minutes let's uh let's see how we get on shall we i waited for about five minutes and they never came back so i guess we're going into diagnostic mode so i stuck a stack in and now i'm just going to follow them around the hopper line yes okay that's good yeah it gets to there yeah it makes it that far makes it this far so where the hell was it getting stuck then there there yes yes this is looking good so far but i'm a bit confused because okay it hasn't made it there yet where's it getting there ah oh, right okay is it because right so it's getting stuck here is it because this is locking quick fix and that's not over that comparator so it shouldn't be locking and now if i pop that in there and just look here yes okay so that's flowing through and all of this i'm pretty confident is going to work so do i just risk it and go back to the chest i think so i'm just going to go back to the chest and just see if things start flowing in again they're coming through oh only 11 though where's the rest are oh, there you go so we now know that our hopper line is complete, it works, it skips over all the ones that it's meant to skip over um, and we can actually just start loading up all of the items that are in here, all of the items that are in here and we'll end up with quite a few things down in, in the miscellaneous chests I reckon but that might you know, accumulate enough items for me to see something else that we can slot in one of the empty slots over there. So yeah I'm going to do that, I think I'll do that as a very quick first person time lapse. Um, yeah, and I'll catch up with you guys in a sec.
Okay, so that's doing its thing. Um, I've loaded it up with, well, quite a few items, as you can see here. Um, and my next plan is just to AFK here for a little bit and let the, uh, yeah, let this run its course. Um, hopefully everything finds its way to its correct space. Um, I do love this. It's so cool. Yeah, well impressed with that. Yeah, so we'll let that feed through. Let's just have a quick check. So right now it's running through end stone. So if we go and have a look in the end stone box, which is over here somewhere. 28, 29, 30, yes. Okay. So yeah, that's working. I'm gonna AFK here for a bit and I'll check on you guys in a sec. And unfortunately, that checking in in a sec is going to have to wait until the next episode because this one is running over ever so slightly. In the next episode, however, we're going to start by building a 3x3 piston door, which I've never made before, so that should be fun. But I really hope that you enjoyed the episode. If you did, leave a like. And if you really loved it, don't forget to subscribe. Keep an eye out for the next episode. But for now, I'm out. See ya. Here we go again. So I'm just grabbing the resources that I need in order to build a three by three piston door. Although I don't actually know how to make a three by three piston door. So I'm really gonna be making it up as I go along. I've got a sneaky feeling that the center block is going to be missing because I don't know how to build a double piston extender. This may well be the worst piston door that's ever been created in the history of Minecraft ever. But let's see how we get on. So this is the space that we've got to work with and I don't actually know what's going to go behind it yet but this is where the piston door is going to go and I'm thinking pressure plates on the floor to activate it and I'll make it quite deep. I'm just using cobblestone for now because we can always swap that out a little bit later. Um, yeah, there's a lot that I don't know about piston doors and the redstone mechanics behind piston doors but this could be fun so let's give it a go. So this is the space that we have to work with and I think the best place to start is just going to be to whack in some uh, some pistons with what's the pistons for slime sticky pistons that's the ones yeah whack in some sticky pistons underneath here and just see where they need to be in order to raise the blocks up and i'm thinking that the door itself should probably be made out of like iron blocks or something just to kind of make it look secure even though it's going to have a hole in the middle so be it and these should be on the right level for what we want to do so then it just needs a bit of iron there and there and then I'm going to need another piston there for that middle one, yeah. And then, okay, so I'll do two on each side, and then I suppose I'll do one in the middle at the top, I think. Maybe? Ooh. What was that? Ooh, about. Okay, so the main parts are in place in terms of pistons and the iron blocks, and now I've just got to figure out the redstone. And I think if I just stick a little torch here, just that I've got some power. Okay, that works. So I can place the redstone right next to the pistons in order to get them to fire. And with that now built up, we can put the pressure plates in place. And I'm thinking that the pressure plates should go one away from the actual door itself. So the pressure plates would go in here. I've actually decided to do them two away from the actual door itself. And then I just need to run the redstone wire underneath, which I should be able to get to underneath here. Now we actually need this inverted, so we want them activated by default. And then when you stand on the pressure plate, they deactivate. Uh redstone round and then run a repeater oh no i can just run that over the top awesome and now yay it works it's the worst three by three piston door that i've ever seen in my entire life but it is three by three technically and it does work just by running over the ah i haven't i haven't hooked this side up yet okay back in a sec okay now let's check it out and yes it opens i put a bit of a delay on the repeaters i'm not sure if we need quite that much you have to stand there for a while before the door opens. So I might play about with that a little bit later. But yeah, I think for now we have a working piston door. Well, I'll say that at the moment you can just walk through here. So I better put this, uh, this iron block back there. Uh, 
the delay. I'm not so sure about the delay as it goes. We might have to look at that again. And I don't like the fact that it all opens at the same time. This is by far the worst piston door that has ever existed, ever. I know I've said that already, but... Anyway, we're getting to the end of the recordings that have got the crappy live audio with it, but there is more to come. Sorry about that. Hope it's still enjoyable. So that's like a tunnel to another area, and I don't even know what's going to be there. If it's going to lead to the, the Wizard's Tower, as Graveyard Rose was saying, or, you know, some sort of farming area, maybe. Or maybe that's where the Villager Trade... Maybe that's where the Villager Trading Hall goes. Oh. What if... I wonder how much space we've got here to play with. So this area I'm going to turn into like a dock kind of thing. I think that could look quite good. Yeah, this is obviously the entrance to the underground area that we built in the last episode. Maybe the episode before that, I don't know yet. I needed to stop thinking about that. I was getting way too carried away and planning projects for the future. And I've got plans for this episode. I kind of wanted to see what was going on sorting system wise, what we were running low on. So I know, for example, blaze rods, one of those things that we're running low on. I tell you what, let's grab a lectern and a book and a quill. It's something that I've never actually done before. Book and quill, okay. Oh, this is this there. What language was that? Book and quill, okay. Oh, this is this there. You, get your words out, Peter. This is exciting. Um, I've never actually done this before. Where would I? Oh, oh, hello. Oh, that's so cool. Alright, have I got to take that off of there? And have I got to do it in my hand? What is this? So I can add a page, delete a page. What's that? Move to the next page? I suppose we've got to test it, haven't we? Let's just put SSSSS. Okay, right. Now. Ah, oh, so you can move it. So whatever's on that page swaps with the page next to it. Gotcha, okay. You can add another page in between and delete a page. Well, I don't know if it looks a little bit weird, but I've put sea lanterns around this uh, sign here, which leads to the book, and you read the book, uh, and it says, this is the shopping list, a list of items that we are running low on, if you have a moment, blah, 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 and then it's got the actual shopping list itself. Um, so, blaze rods, leather, redstone, bones, rockets, glowstone, glass, golden carrots. I'm put gold, I've put gold carrots on there, because I feel like I'm at a point in my Minecraft career where I shouldn't be eating fish just because I've got load of it i should be like you know eating the top notch food and golden carrots seem to be you know the one um so yeah golden carrots is on there never bricks jungle logs coal ink sacks i mean you can pair things off so redstone and coal obviously are going to go well together um maybe blaze rods could be a farm built for it or just go out hunting for it um oh i need to put wither skulls on here as well um glowstone obviously is another thing as well um, and then sea lanterns because we need to make some more of them, vines because I find them difficult to get and I need the mossy cobblestone and um, stone brick variants, uh, and end rods. So yeah, I might just work my way through a few of these and see how I get on. Over in the um, logger's cabin, the lumberjack cabin, I've actually got Jasper over there. And I'm thinking maybe Bender needs to be the chief of the uh, Guardian farm. Because I want to head over there anyway, make sea lanterns, um, repair my items, and I'll move Bender over there. And he can be chief of the Guardian farm. Come on, Bender. You could, oh, you've got stuck in a boat, haven't you? Uh, Alright. Is it just me, or noises in the never got weird and eerie more so than they usually do come on come around the boat oh no <laughs> what are you doing bender you're not filling me with faith that you can run the guardian farm mate okay let's plonk these in here then let's try that again come on don't let me lead you there we go all right let's get up the other end and then um just hope you don't teleport outside of this tunnel. You wouldn't do that, would you? You're not that stupid. Ah, oh, really questioning. Really questioning 
your ability bender right now. Come on. Alright, that's that's good I suppose. Can we go up there? No, not there. There. Many moments later. We're through. Are you bender? Yes. Have a seat. Have a steak. Good boy. Well done. Ah. Oh. Alright, you made that nice and easy for me in the end. Well done. Right, yeah, so while we're over here, I'm going to repair all of my items. Um, and I'll just put this down here in case we ever need it for Bender. Um, yeah, repair all of my items. And get some sea lanterns brewing up. How are we doing on actual results? Oh, that's good. And that's good. Oh, we can make a fair few sea lanterns. Okay, I might make them first and then switch the farm on. Well... The farm's running, and the XP should start floating through any second now. There we go. A uh, little bit of damage on my equipment, but for the most part it's just the tools that I'm worried about. Here it comes. I do love this farm. It's just, even just watching it work is satisfying. The fact that they laser onto you, but they're dead before they can get a lock, that's very satisfying. The very gentle ting, 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 ting. Yeah, brilliant. And then... Just kind of seeing this thing working. It's quite cool as well. Yeah, absolutely love it. But yeah, as I was saying, we um we have no need to make sea lanterns for a very long time. I've made enough and that didn't even touch the amount of stock that we had there. Um so even this is gonna to top it up a little bit. Um yeah. Going well. We can take a few things off the list, I think. And uh Bender is here looking after the place, so feel safer already. Um, I felt bad that it was raining, so I thought I'd quickly just build a roof here for for Bender. Um, you're going to be in the way there, though, aren't you? Come over here, maybe. Come on. It's just not a very clever dog. And that's... Rick, if you're watching this, that's no reflection on you. Um, it's just the dog. The dog's not too smart. It's not, not got the brains, you know? Um, <laughs> it's just... He looks so happy though, look at him. Oh, yeah, I do feel bad that he's out in the rain. Let me build him a quick something just so that he's uh, covered up. Now, I was trying to figure out what to do with the roof and inevitably ended up here. Um, and I just put this rim of half slab prismarine bricks around the outside. And that's made all the difference. That, I don't know, just giving it that boulder really kind of somehow finishes it off. I feel... I feel like I can see more that could happen with this now. Maybe uh, maybe some fences around the outside of some sort. Or I quite like what I did with the trapdoors um, at, the, at the cabin, the lumberjack cabin. So maybe that. Uh, yeah, that could work. Anyway, I'm going to figure out this, this roof here. So Bender's now in the dry. He can run his station f yeah, without being drenched through all the time and shaking. Um, I've just put this board around the outside of the ice path as well, which I feel you know just kind of brings it together a little bit better. And then down here you can see that everything is enclosed, but I've had to do above the redstone just one half slab higher. Um, but yeah, you can get down here without banging your head, which is kind of all that I all that I can hope for from stairs. Um, yeah, if you've got any ideas for... Oh, I'll tell you what, if this was... Oh, I've had an idea. I've had an idea. Alright, it's not as drastic a change as I thought, but yeah, just putting the bricks up the sides just kind of gives it more of a perimeter feel. Um... Yeah, okay. I did think about doing the top and the bottom as well, so it was like a ring all around here, but then that literally only leaves these two as prismarine stairs, and I thought that might look a bit look a bit funky. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, so this area is now done with, I think. Let's make sure the farm's off. Yes, it is. I mean, oh, see, so there's, there's some down there, and I think we'll just switch it on and get these ones, but then as soon as I switch it off again, more's going to spawn, so it'll just be an end of cycle. Um, yeah, the thing that I came here for, though, was the sea lanterns, which I now have plenty of. It was to bring Bender over here, which he's now here, and it was to just repair all of my tools, which I did. I mean, that's just where I've been using it since then. Cool. So, this area is done with. Through we go. Okay, so, I think the next thing that I'd like to do is to head to the nether uh, and see if I can get a few more wither skeleton skulls and blaze rods, just to top those up, because they're the sort of thing that you don't need loads and loads and loads of but yeah I've only got one of each left so first thing I need to do is get myself a decent bit of gold armor um, and 
I've got three bits on me that I've just pulled from the Skelly farm, but I'm just going to go over to the uh, Guardian farm, get some more levels up. I know we just came from here, um, but yeah, get some more levels up, um, and then I'll go down to the enchantment setup. Yeah, and do do my thing there and see what I can get in terms of these uh, this gold armor. And there we go, that's level 60. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but my frames per second has taken such a hit. It's unreal. I think, yeah, I might need to turn this off now. I think it's because we've got all this XP flowing, we've got all the entities spawning and then their drops and all of their drops are being carried up and over. Um, it's backing up here, so yeah, let's um, switch it off. That should give us an instant boost to our frames per second. Yeah, that's much better already. And then, uh, yeah, I guess we better empty this out. So, I think I've got a pretty decent um, set of boots. I'm just sticking mending on it. I'm just calling them never boots for now, but if anyone's got any suggestions, let me know. Um, but yeah, it's got, well, it will have Feather Falling, Protection 4, Unbreaking 2, and Mending. And I think, oh, and a Broken Anvil. I think with that in mind, that's a pretty good set of boots for the never. Um, I'm questioning whether or not to set the elytra. I think I will in case I fall then I've got rockets. I'm definitely going to want some potions so I'm going to grab them now. Um, something's happened. I'm for some reason prepping for a project. I've got an idea of what that project is and that is to better connect the never fortress where we're headed now to try and get blaze rods and wither skulls to the main never hub. Now it doesn't have to be anything too over the top but I'm thinking it's quite a long way at the minute it's just a one wide two high strip. But if I made it a two by two then I could at least put some rails down and block off you know some of the irrelevant parts of the never cave that we have to go through. Um, maybe pretty it up a little bit. Certainly light it up with some sea lanterns. Anyway I'm going to get started on that um, on my way to the never hub not to the Never Hub, to the Never Fortress via the Never Hub uh, in our hunt for Blaze Rods and Wither Skulls. This bit might end up becoming part of the main Never Hub in some way, shape, or form. Oh, I love how that disappears off into the distance. That's kind of cool. Um, but this is the part that I was actually thinking of. Um, so if there was like a train station of sorts, maybe here. Um, yeah, maybe something like that, and then obviously this line would take you all the way to the Never Fortress. I don't think that should take too long. I think it's quite a big project, but I don't think it should take too long if I just power through it. So I'm going to crack on and just see where I'm at for the next progress update. Um, progress update. I've mined four blocks. One, two, three, four. And look what I found. What are the chances? Quite a pretty block, actually, isn't it? There's no more around, is there? No. Oh! 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 Um. We're at level 57. I didn't know that happened at 57. I mean, I know it happened kind of further along, but that's still quite new news to me. But to get two bits, I am rather surprised. Oh, what are the chances of that happening? any more just laying around is there no wow uh no one mind if i borrow this will they i don't actually have one on me cool thank you i have three of them now um now what i've got no idea what to actually do anyone knows what to do let me know down in the comments thanks oh i'm getting lucky i'm just I'm getting so lucky I'm not even looking for it. Okay, so here's what I've done with this area. I'm thinking, well, I'm not thinking. I have done um, gray walls with these like strip lighting in between, and I'm going to have like a glass pane here to try and give it a bit more depth as well. So yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I've been working on. Um, yeah, and then you obviously run up here, and this is where you would catch the train, I suppose. Need to get a button up there, and then shoot off down in this direction. Alright, so I've been working on this for a while now. I've had to run back to base to get some bits. 
Um, this has turned into a bigger project than I originally planned, but it's getting there. I mean, if I uh, just lose the shield for a second, it's quite long. Oh, what's that about? Ooh. Uh, well, that's a bit trippy, isn't it? That doesn't normally happen. What are we doing down here? <laughs> wow. Uh, Mojang. Something's wrong. That's just the weirdest, the weirdest ride ever. Uh, anyway, that's as far as I've got. So, yeah, I'm going to carry on. Can I just say, I am really enjoying this. I don't know why. This is so such an easy, repetitive task. But just being here in the never, the sounds, the game sounds that I've added in one of the recent updates are absolutely amazing. It really creates just an atmosphere that's kind of frightening but you you kind of want to carry on playing anyway um yeah great job on that that's a uh, really really immersive actually i really like it oh dear all right i'm gonna crack on what do we want to upgrade i suppose i suppose this pickaxe is what we go through most of all and i wonder if you know, Barry White the Fourth has been very good to me. He's been with me for a very long time. I feel like maybe he needs to go into the Hall of Fame and we should just grab ourselves another new one, a brand new Neverite pickaxe. Yeah, do you know what? I feel like that's just the right thing to do. Well, that is a bloody good start. First one that I've enchanted was Unbreaking Free. I'm pretty sure I've got some Silk Touch books. Uh, Silk Touch book. We have... Or Hunter with Unbreaking Free, Silk Touch, Efficiency 5, and Mending. Oh, I think this is my first ever survival Neverite pickaxe. I don't think I've ever had a Neverite pickaxe genuinely through survival before where I've like made and you know found the ancient debris. I think I've been gifted one once. Well. That's certainly a different texture. I take it there's not a Chroma Hills texture for this yet. Um, <laughs> okay, that changes things like, ugh, I don't like it. It looks horrible. That just looks, it doesn't look horrible. That's not fair to say. No, I'll take that back. It's just not the HD Chroma Hills that I'm used to. Um, should I keep that in there? Yeah, I think so. Okay, and these can go back. I can't believe I did that in one pickaxe. Right, now I'm going hunting for Wither Skulls and what was the other thing? Blaze Rods. Yes, that's right. And unfortunately, that is all that we have time for in this episode. But don't worry, the next one will be coming out very soon and we'll pick up right where we left off and jump straight into that blaze and with a skeleton farming. It might go well, it might not go well. You'll have to find out in the next episode. But if you enjoyed this one, please do leave a like. And if you really loved it, don't forget to subscribe. Hope to see you for the next episode. But for now, I'm out. See ya. We're here. Let's get on with it, shall we? Withers and blaze rods. Now, I believe I know where the blaze spawner is. I've not been here for a while, so it might take me a minute or two to find it. lit all of this up quite well so we shouldn't encounter too much resistance okay hearing the blazes now if I remember rightly I can peek over here yeah okay so that is as good a place as any I think to fight them but actually no because it's very open isn't it I'm going to go ahead and drink this now I've got another one on me anyway I'm a little bit concerned that I might end up 
in the lava. No one wants that. Oh, I can phase through blocks, that's not good. It's because I'm wearing the elytra, isn't it? I hope they sort that glitch out soon. Okay. This is opening up a little bit. Uh, maybe not. Wow, we went deep in here. Okay. Not been here for a while. Pigment. Saddle, nice. Aha! Right, this shield's getting in the way. It's not good. Look, it's right in the way. Okay. Oh, how did I get withered, even though... Right. Oh, you've got to play this game a bit better, Peter. This is the area that I want to be in then, because I haven't lit it up, but the bars are all in place. I was hoping I might have had one by now, but no, apparently not. Uh, any down here? No. What's up here? Ah, oh, this room. I vaguely remember this. Aha! I kind of don't want to hit the pig man, because, you know... Whoa! Did I hit you? Did I hit you? I hope I didn't hit you. Right, do you know what? I'm just gonna... Yes! Right, I'm withered, but I'm okay. Blaze. I need pigmen in here. Cool. And I've blocked this off because it leads back the way that we came, I think. Right. No actual rods or wither skulls yet, so I'm just going to crack on with this and let you know how I get on.
Well, that was ever so slightly dumb. Um, yeah. Do I just make a mad run for it, or... I mean, where even was I? Hmm. I think the best thing to do is grab some backup gear. Yeah, I think grab some backup gear and go and fetch my stuff. That's only the second time that I've died in the series, believe it or not. Um, the first time was the Enderman that you saw in one of the previous episodes that I put up quite recently. Um, yeah, Jesus. That's my first, I think, genuine death where I've been, I don't know, out of my depth a little bit in terms of baddies and monsters. Because the Enderman one, that was just me being stupid. That was a mistake. I just looked in the wrong direction, that's all. Um, back up gear. Let's see, how well have I prepared for this? Okay, okay. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to need that. I will take that. That should be enough for me to get back my stuff. Alright. Yep. Let's uh let's go oh actually I'm gonna take a fire resistance potion just in case. Uh, and I'll take that close to the time. Should I take you to defend me? Explodex? Um mm, I'm worried you're gonna end up in lava. I mean, what would you prefer? Would you prefer to sit here by the Never Put all day, or do you want to go on an actual adventure? You want to go on an adventure, don't you? Come on. Get in the... Get in the Never Put. Why are we playing this game? So you... are just like your other dog, Jasper. Yep, you're very cool. <laughs> Right stuff, I'm coming for you. Give me a clear run there, that's all I need. Clear run there. I've got a gold helmet on, so I should be good against hoglins. Or piglins, or whatever they're called. Okay. Just fight your way through. Gotta get that stuff. Okay. Definitely this way, I remember that. And I went to the upstairs bit, didn't I? Okay. Oh, can't believe it. Technically not my first death, I know, but it's my my first proper death in this series. Ah oh, if that was hardcore, that would have been it, it would have been over. That's why I don't play hardcore, because I'd have lost everything up until this point. Okay. Powering through. Oh, we're not on that bit yet. Let's try that again. Powering through. Here we go. So, check your corners. Beware of the safety barriers. Uh, I think it's this way to the steps. There's a blaze there. Alright, you're going down. Two blaze. This sword takes three hits to kill him. Okay, you, I've got to rush you, I'm afraid. Well, that works. Okay, I've got a blaze here. Oh, another blaze. Ah, oh, I didn't bring a potion, did I? Oh, I should have bought a potion of fire resistance. Oh, I did. Stupid boy. Okay. Yeah, I know, you've got a bow and arrow, right. Okay, steps. Come the long way around, I think, but... 
You had the higher ground, Anakin, and I killed you anyway. Right. Okay. Come on into the safety bar. Oh, this is going well so far. Oh, I shouldn't say that, should I? That's a silly thing to say. Right. How are we doing? Got to be getting close now, right? Okay, he's got one of them. Good. It's actually the skeletons that I'm most worried about, to be honest, because not the big skeletons, the arrow skeletons, because I haven't got a shield. Should have just invested in the shield, really, shouldn't I? Right, here's the people. Right, they've all got to die then, haven't they? Let me deal with everything else, then I'm going to deal with that little bastard that's wearing my helmet. Come on. Come on. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. This is it. Intelligent gaming. Just one. One at a time. Well. Back up, back up, back up. Come on, come further down the hall. Oh, there's so many of them. Right. Die already. Oh shit. I'm committed. No! No! Oh no! Oh, I, need to, oh, I should have set my respawn point as well. Right, I should have armoured up better than that. Have you just. No, okay. Whew. Well, as you can see, I made it and got much of my stuff back, but the issue that I have is that I think my I didn't quite make it in time to save my shovel, which is a bit of a shame. Right, let's just save all the stuff that is going back. Is that my bow or my backup bow? Ah, oh, my bow went as well then. That's my backup bow there. 
Yeah, now I need to get back. I need to fight my way back. And I don't have any fire resistance potions. Okay. Come on, you can do this. Just get home. That's the name of the game now. Oh, come on then. Cool. I'm just going to sprint through here. I don't even care what's in that room. Oh, I can hear arrows going at me. If I can just get through here, then I should be pretty much alright. Oh, that was nerve-wracking. Um, I've got most of my stuff back. It's a shame about the shovel. Um, yeah, it is a shame about the shovel. And when I've got my Elytra back. That was probably one of the main things that I wanted back. Everything else is... It's replaceable, really. It's just all. Oh, it's just the Elytra that's uh, more difficult to get my hands on. I have got backups, as you know, but it's not. Um, it's not the point. If I can recover it, I'd rather recover it. I can make everything else, just not the Elytra. Okay. Right. I'm going to see you when I get back. I'm just reassessing my never right pick. It's gone. No! <laughs> oh, I only just made it. I can't believe that. Oh, no. Oh. That's so disappointing. Um, now, unfortunately, in my hastiness, I also put on Curse of Binding and Curse of Binding, which isn't ideal. So, I'm going to have to die <laughs> again in order to remove those. The last episode was a bit of a disaster. But not to worry, this episode, we're moving on, we're not going to let that get us down, we've got work to do. And we're back on the Valeria realm playing Bedrock Minecraft on PS4. And uh, yeah, we've got some plans for this episode. In fact, just one plan, in fact. So this, this door's pretty cool, even though it doesn't work. Anyway, I am... Um, um, I've gotten completely distracted by the piston door. Ah, now I remember. We're building a wizard's tower. So we've been talking about building this wizard's tower for a couple of episodes now and I wanted to have a space where, well I just wanted to build a big tower basically and I mean a big tower, like a 29 block diameter tower that goes up and has a pointed roof and is a bit mismatched and has you know, vines coming off of it and that sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to, to building something like that but obviously like most of the things in the realm I want it to have a purpose and the purpose would be an auto brewing room where you can just flick a couple of levers, push a button and then you get the potion that you want whatever that may be and I want to have all of the potions available to me with the exception of Dragon's Breath because I forgot to collect some when we killed the Ender Dragon. Oops. And I've recently learned that if you smelt down never rack you get never bricks and that is what i'm going for in terms of block palette i think a mix of never brick variants and mossy cobblestone for the roof perhaps something like that and maybe some monument blocks also so while our awesome super smelter is smelting all of these down into nether bricks i'm gonna go and get rid of some of the llamas that have plagued this realm for episodes and episodes now And now that I've quenched my thirst for blood, it's time to set up. I've got this nice shulker box that's red and called Redstone Components. Guess what that's for? 
I'm also in need of some more wood, so I'm going to run out and grab that now over by the lumberjack cabin that we built in one of the previous episodes. I just wanted to take this opportunity very quickly to say thank you to all of the new subscribers. We're at like 60 plus subscribers now, which I've said this in a previous video, that's not a great amount of subscribers in the grand scheme of things, you know, comparing it to your, your big Minecraft players, you know, your Mumbos and your Ethos and your other O's and all the rest of it. But, you know, the, the amount of growth, we've doubled in growth in the last 30 days, which is absolutely phenomenal and I couldn't be more grateful so thank you very much i hope that the content that's being put out at the moment is entertaining um, and is you know keeping your keeping your boats floated if you will if you have any suggestions of course drop them down in the comments let me know what you want to see if you want um, a different style of recording or a different style of gameplay or if it's working for you let me know honestly just give me that feedback let me know what direction to take this channel in there was also something else that i wanted to mention and i can't go into too much in terms of detail about it but 1.17 is coming out very very soon i think it's going to be a june release or something like that please correct me if i'm wrong we won't be on the valeria realm when we hit 117 because there's going to be too many changes that are happening in terms of world generation um, we're obviously getting the caves and cliffs update and that's going to mean an entirely new world and i was thinking about you know what's the best way of, of making that happen and incorporating it i did just think about carrying on with this world and just going to new chunks that hadn't been loaded before in order to see the new terrain generation but i think that actually starting a new world would be the best way forward considering that this series started halfway through this particular realm when a lot of it was built you know we, we already had the iron farm and the cactus farm and all that sort of stuff i think it'd be pretty cool just to kind of start from the beginning again and as it happens i've been invited to join a multiplayer server and that's all that i'm saying on that but just keep in mind that when 117 comes out we will be switching over to a new server a multiplayer server and that is going to be so much fun So now that we've got all of the wood that we were going to need in order to create the hoppers, which I've created here as you can see, we can now put all of the, this extra wood back, uh, all this extra iron that I'm not going to use and all the other things that I'm not going to end up using. And if I just head over to our redstone components box, which is so aptly named and red, you can see I've already started to put together all of the things that we might need for this particular project. Now this is for the, uh, obviously for the redstone side of it. And the idea is that we'll have a load of droppers that are going to come and drop items um, that are going to be the ingredients for the potions up into a hopper line which will then feed it through in the correct order into the brewing stand which i think is going to end up being on the left hand side this is coming from a tutorial that i saw a long time ago and always stuck with me as yeah this is pretty cool it's it's pretty wide like it's pretty big hence the big tower um but also I don't think efficiency is really what we're going for. It's more ease of use. Do, do we have um, a setup where we can just flick a couple of levers, push a button, and it brews the potions for you? And that's what I'm going for. I'm sure all of this will make a lot more sense once we actually get into the redstone component side of the tower. Um, but yeah, for now, I think we just need to focus on building the actual tower in the first place. And if we have a look over here in this blue shulker box, this is the block palette that I'm going for. So we've got some bricks in there, some never bricks, some mossy cobblestone blocks, normal cobblestone blocks. We've got all of the redstone there, so I think we're ready to get going. Okay, so here's what I've got so far. That's kind of like the base. I've just done it out of Neverwreck because I'm planning on covering it up with like ice and sand on the ice and sand sides, obviously. This walkway is gonna be the main entrance. So there'll be this area down here, which is 29 in diameter, I believe. Um, I don't know what to do with that space exactly yet, but this kind of level that we are at here, that's gonna be the main floor of it. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I had in mind. I've got this little hut set up here that's just for like sleeping and storing the items just for, for now, like shulker boxes and such. Um, yeah, so far, so good, but I'll come back to you with you know more of the building and I think it's just gonna be a progress update type thing because quite honestly, this is quite a big project. And this actually is one of the more satisfying things that you can do in this game. I think I've said that before. Um, I love the sound that goes with it, like the smashing sound, and you just 
tear through them so quickly, block lag aside, obviously. Um, but yeah, there is a purpose to this. And that purpose is to build up around the base, which is, as I said in the last clip, why I've used netherrack, because I'm really not fussed for what it's made out of at the bottom. I just want to have it kind of as if it's coming out of the ice or if it's exploded up out of the ice, kind of slap bang between the middle of the ice and the, the sandy, the deserty part. And I think that this kind of just needs to curve its way down. So I'm thinking if I just stick a layer where the top of the ice is going to be and then kind of arch downwards a little bit and just see what we end up with, I think. Well, I really don't want to hurt these guys or just kill them off, um, but they're really annoying. Like they just keep attacking me. I think it's because they've got cubs with them. Once the cubs are grown, then that'll be that'll be fine. I wonder if we could tame one. Actually, how do you how do you tame a polar bear? Is it fish? I would imagine that would make sense to me. Um, but yeah, all I'm trying to do at the moment is just lead them away. So then hopefully I can run past them and they won't be inside the. Uh, the, the render distance or the, the simulation distance and I'm hoping that what I've done there is just going to be enough to leave them out there look that's far enough away surely surely look ah oh, you're still coming aren't you ah oh, that's still coming all right new plan And then I spent ages trying to tame the polar bears. I tried everything, the different types of fish, including cooked fish, it didn't work. Someone let me know, how do you tame a polar bear? Let's just check out this uh, ice, what do you want to call it, ice build up I suppose. Let's just check that out from a distance. I think this is a good place to have a quick scope at from. If you just peek over this edge, yeah, all right, that's kind of the thing that I'm going for. It definitely needs some fine tuning, but yeah, I want that kind of you know building up, that ice build up up this side, and then on the other side it'll be sand against where that desert is. Well, it's not really a desert, is it? It's just a patch of sand. Um, yeah, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm gonna crack on and see what we can do in terms of finishing this off. And just while I'm smelting up some uh, more never bricks, this is such a good, hang on, I can do better than this. This is such a good build. I absolutely love this shop. I don't think it's ever gonna get used, um, if I'm being honest, but what a great design.
All right, here's what we've got so far. I'm gonna do a quick reveal, just a uh, whip round and, oh, that didn't work very well, did it? <laughs> there it is anyway, that's the height that we're up to. So we're getting pretty high now, but there's definitely a long way to go. Um, I do want it to be flat, so I've kind of mixed in some stairs, some never rack with the never brick and the, um, what are they called? The never brick walls are, yeah, they work really, really well. I like the fact that it kind of gives it that, that element of, of depth and it's just not a flat building. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. If we just take a look from down here, yep, it's looking good. And if you can just imagine that that will go up into the sky and obviously the ice is gonna wrap around and the sand is gonna wrap around as well. There's always a wandering trader, isn't there? And I have yet another update for you. There are more layers and I've put in like this crisscross never brick fence pattern in the top. You can't really see it because the scaffolding's in the way. Um, I'll try and get a close up shot in a little bit. But yeah, this is, this is where we're at at the moment. And I'm pretty happy with the progress that has been made um, on this particular build. And if you look at it from this angle, yeah, there you go. You can see kind of that crisscross pattern, which I think is really nice. And this is how it looks from the inside. So you've got this pattern, which was a pain in the ass to put in place. Uh, got a lot more to do, a lot more layers to build up. But I think that, you know, with enough time and enough effort, this could end up being a really, really good build. Um, here's the kind of front. Here's where the, the entrance walkway is going to be. So it'll just come in here um, at kind of halfway up this build. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this here. I've been doing this pretty much all day, so I'm gonna go ahead, get some sleep, come back in the morning, and uh, see how we get on then. And I did exactly that. I went away, I got some sleep, and then me and the wife started watching a film when I got my phone out, because I've got Minecraft on my phone, of course. And uh, yeah, things happened. Progress has been made, and I cannot tell you how happy I am with the way that this has come out. Let me just do a quick reveal and spin around, check this out. We have a roof, we have an entire building. It even looks like a wizard's hat. I'm so happy with the way that this has come out. It's not just a flat roof, it's even got a little chimney at the top. I've put some decorations around the outside as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy with this. I really feel like this is a good build. I think that uh, we need to work on this, this pathway. We need to work on the ice, obviously, and the sand around the bottom. But, you know, I've done some of the sand around the bottom and I think it's looking pretty good. All in all, yeah, I feel like we could even be ready, possibly, to move on to the redstone and actually build the contraption that, that brews all of the potions for us. Well, I've done a little bit more work on the interior that I'd like to show you. Obviously, you know, this, this is a very nice building. I'm so happy with this. Um, yeah, so this will be the main entrance way. We're going to need to open up this so that it's kind of a three by three area instead of just this one by two. And on the inside, you can see I've put all of these lanterns on the chains that took forever. I'm so proud of myself. And now we can actually start to get to work on the redstone part of this build. So the first thing that we need to do is just fill in this area that I've marked out here and that's nowhere near wide enough. I've got a feeling I may have to expand the sides of the tower a little bit, but this is kind of where I'm thinking of putting the actual brewing station itself. And before I can really go any further, I'm in need of uh, redstone lamps, which of course means glowstone. I had no glowstone left. Um, I'm in the nether, I'm bricking it because these ghasts they just keep spawning every oh he just despawned they just keep spawning everywhere they're just constantly in the the, the range where they can just suddenly go Hoi! and then hit you come on be honest you are so impressed with my ghast impression aren't you i am so lost where's home where do i need to be going oh down there So I think we are pretty much done in terms of the actual building of this device and I've labeled all of these items so that I know which ones I need to flick on depending on which potion I want. So let's go ahead and make, um, what should we make? I, 
I feel like helium should be glistening melon and not just melon, but we'll we'll test that, I'm sure. Let's uh let's go ahead and make a fire resistance potion. So you flick that one, the redstone lamp comes on, that's nice. You flick this one because obviously we want it to last the longest amount that it can. And hopefully if we just just go have a quick look in here, so it should have uh yeah, when I push the button that should deactivate that torch, which should set off these redstone lines, and where we've flicked on those levers, it's unlocked the dropper behind it which means that those are the only items that will end up getting released and they should get released in the correct order as well so if I just go ahead and let me just double check this at the back yeah so that will then turn off power that which will then send a signal through this redstone line and activate any unlocked droppers that's if I've done this right that's how it should work so let's go ahead and just push the button and hopefully things should start flowing in ah okay good there's the never wall and where's the rest of it yep there's our magma cream as well which should be followed by the redstone dust which will extend it to the full eight minutes and they should all flow in there in the correct order and just leave us with obviously this will be an awkward potion but should leave us with an eight minute fire resistance potion more progress has been made we've got the roof we've got the construction on the inside we've got the extensions on the side which looks like Tony Blair's ears um, and I've been working on this walkway going up to the main entrance of it and I think it started to look quite good I introduced some spruce wood stairs in there because I thought that that worked pretty well but um, yeah I feel like this is a pretty good build I'm so proud of myself I'm not a builder as you know and this isn't looking too bad so of course let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions but yeah I'm so pleased with myself what a good build uh, this is kind of where the entrance is going to be and I'm going to use these ice um, icicles, don't know what else to call them, as kind of like part of what's holding up this bridge that leads towards the entrance. As you can see here, get rid of this snow, as you can see here I've lit it all up with lanterns, we've got a mix of uh, walls and stairs and then that leads us straight into this area here. I don't know what to do with the top, I'm sure that we can do something up there that's related to a wizard's tower, it doesn't just have to be for the, the brewing of the potions um, and this area down the bottom as well i thought about filling it with lava but i'm not sure if that's quite the way to go but yeah this this entrance way here i've tried to kind of decorate it quite nicely and then this this iceberg that you kind of have to walk through that's also holding up the actual bridge into the the wizard's tower it's a good day but it's also a sad day It's good because we are back in the Valeria realm, which of course is awesome. It's been a while since I've been here. I've been very busy with work. That's why we've not had, uh, yeah, not really had an episode in a while. But it's also a sad day because it's actually time to leave the Valeria realm behind. The reason for this is that, you know, we've done a lot here. We've worked on a lot of different things, a lot of different projects. We've achieved a lot. And I just want to kind of, I'm looking forward to starting again. As much as I don't want to give up everything that we've got here, everything that we've worked on and everything that we've built, it, it is just time to kind of start again and see what we can do from day zero. And that ties in nicely with the fact that we've been invited to join an SMP and the SMP is called the Corruption Realm for Bedrock. Um, and there are honestly some, some brilliant players over there. I've been in their kind of group chat for a while and getting to know everybody and see what everybody's like. And everyone just seems like solid, decent human beings which is exactly what you want from a multiplayer realm this is kind of where we spawned up this was the beginning um the site that is now the rocket shop was actually my starter base this was our initial um sugarcane area that we used in order to get the craft not the crafting bench enchantment table and all the books around it and all that sort of stuff um, this was our initial never portal that obviously le leads now to what is now the never hub but uh, initially I don't know if you saw that first episode but it's where the horse died it was literally just through this portal and on the other side so our super smelter was one of the sort of earlier builds I think this was a silent um, silent whisperer design and uh, yeah honestly this thing is just absolutely amazing the way that it kind of rotates um, you know you stick all your stuff in the top top chest up there uh, and then it rotates around by flicking that one and flicking that one and yeah just absolutely brilliant because it just works its way around and the next sort of big project that I worked on was this castle type thing which again is typical me 
um, kind of unfinished. We did. Uh, we just wanted somewhere to put the stables, to put the horses, um, and that's exactly what this is that we've got here. And then from the top of the tower, you can see the cactus farm and the kind of semi-automatic wheat, carrot, and potato farm. Our manual farm over there for all of the melons and pumpkins. Um, the cow farm, chicken farm, which um, obviously cooks the chickens for us, which is lovely. And here is our slime farm, which hopefully should still be working. Yeah, there we go. Which generates all of our slime balls for us. Uh, very satisfying to watch. And then obviously these get transported up this uh, bubble elevator to the storage chest up the top. And I do love seeing these slime balls just working their way up and <laughs> popping out of the top. Brilliant, absolutely love it. Of course we have to say goodbye to all of these sheep who have been these uh, these prisoners for, well, pretty much the entire season, just <laughs> confined in their little one by two glass prison. Of course we've got this monstrosity of a tree farm which is just absolutely amazing. And then back over here in what is now the shopping district, so we've obviously got our monument shop, um, which Graveyard Rose built, and we've got our slime shop, which I built, we've got the rocket shop, which I also built, there's an entire episode on this one as well, and it wouldn't be Minecraft unless we went down and checked out the mine. There really isn't a whole lot to see here, just rows and rows and rows and rows of strip mines that go on for hundreds and hundreds of blocks and of course we've got this god awful statue holding the egg which uh, is definitely not my finest build I've got no idea what that is in his right hand not my best ever build I do like the fact that he's standing on the dragon head I think that's a nice little touch and then we have the square and this was uh, definitely one of my favorite builds it's um, got some good detail to it I like the stone bricks mossy cobblestone brick mix the chisel stone brick in there and the sea lanterns still not entirely sure about this fountain in the middle though and then of course we've got the colored glass walkway that leads to the center of the base um, and yeah again this is one of those things I'm very proud of it's a very pretty pretty build and a not so pretty build would be the concrete maker which I think I've used more in this season than I've ever used in the entire history of my playing Minecraft previously and of course I have to mention the monster storage system um, which I think at this point has well over 400 slots and there's two double chests per item and even then, you know, we've still got these empty slots at the end here. Over here, we've got our monument to the Nether, which is where myself and Dragon Hunter 1974 we uh, we took on the Nether, and it was dangerous, and we died a fair few times. But it was a really good adventure, so we built this uh, monument to that effort. Ah, uh, the landing strip and the bedroom, and I love this mix of the cyan and the sandstone. I just feel like that really works well. And of course, I need to show the gold farms. Over here we have the courts, and this was originally going to be used for a very specific scene that we never ended up filming, but I built this court like a courtroom. So the idea would be that the judge would sit up here and judge me, and I would be standing on this block here, and I'd be watching the evidence against me on this green screen up here um, before my sentencing, and the sentencing would have been whatever it would have been, but I think this was for a very specific crime that I'll stick up there um, in the green screen so that you can see which crime it is that I'm talking about. And then the executioner, from this perspective, would then receive the instructions from the judge and be told to pull the lever and sentence me to death. And I'm not going to actually fall down there, but yeah, that's a long old drop. That would definitely kill me. Here's our lovely lumberjack cabin. And uh, yeah, built this one so that we had somewhere where we could rest and chill out because we needed a hell of a lot of wood for our storage system and some of the other projects that we were working on. Again, there's a whole episode dedicated to this, I'll try and leave a card up there, but uh, yeah, this was our, our lumberjack area. And then of course we have our never hub, which 
is quite extensive at this point. So this one leads off to the drowned farm collection points. All of the drowned end up coming through this portal, land in here, and then you kill them with your looting three sword. This was our crazy, crazy hallway that we built as part of the Never Hub, um, which I still love the design of, the spiraling. Uh, it really works well. And of course, this leads us straight through to the Guardian Farm. And this was an epic project. We worked so hard on this one um, to get this up and running. Again, this is a Silent Whisperer design. I think this one, this one covered about three or four episodes with some episodes in between it, so a lot going on. We've got our storage system here. We've got our doggo over here whose name escapes me. Let's have a quick look. Oh, this is Rick. This is um, Rick's one. This is Bender. Um, so yeah, Bender is now the the mayor of the Guardian Farm, which is lovely stuff. And then here it splits off into two different directions. And on the right we have the end portal um, and some other stuff. And on the left we have Graveyard Roses base, we have the industrial district and we have the desert as well. This was the initial industrial district base that um, Dragon Hunter and I built. And uh, yeah, we came over here obviously on horses, hence the horses are here. Here's our village of Baby Maker. And then here we have the industrial district, which again, I am very proud of this particular set of buildings. Here we've got our melon and pumpkin farm, which is all automatic and uh, yeah, it does a fantastic job. Just spurting stuff out. There we go. We've got our iron farm, we've got our bamboo farm, which has a flying machine operating it. Got a gunpowder farm with all of the creepers that fall out from there. This wasn't the most efficient one. Um, I'd love to kind of build a more efficient gunpowder farm. Oh, you say that actually, look. Now that I've said that, ah, oh, the redstone's not working, is it? And of course, this all leads to our storage system for the industrial districts, which hopefully is just logging all of these items away nice and easily for us. And then just through here, we have the train station. If we hop in here and flick that button, we're off. And there we go, that's the end of the line. But we're gonna we're gonna head back because the only thing up there is the Never Fortress, which uh, yeah, I don't want to go over there because the last time I went over there things did not end well. And then finally we have the entrance over here to the smuggler's cave of sorts. Um, which maybe needs widening a little bit, but I guess we're not going to get around to doing that. Uh, and yeah, here we have the cavern. The graveyard Rose and I built in uh, in one of the episodes as well. Which again, very proud of. I wish that we'd uh, kind of finished it off a little bit more, but for the most part, it's still, yeah, still very happy with this. And I think with the Caves and Cliffs update that's coming, I think that we're going to be able to do something really, really cool when it comes to cavernous things. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to that. And of course, how could I forget the Wizard's Tower? And this was the last episode that we did. Uh, all of my building supplies are still over here. As you can see, still got my redstone box and uh, all the other supplies that one might need for a building of this size. Uh, but it's got... Yeah, I was really impressed with this build. Really proud of myself for this build. It's got all of the things that we need to be able to craft whatever potions it is that we want so if and when we ever come back to this realm we will be able to just hit the ground running and everything is already established and that i think is pretty cool and so that's it that's the end of the realm tour i've really enjoyed this season i think it's been great it's been good for me to kind of introduce myself to youtube from a gaming perspective and creating episodes um, and building this i think this is an amazing realm i'm really proud of this it's definitely the best realm that i've ever built but i'm really looking forward as i say to working with some other people doing a couple of collaboration projects and just kind of seeing you know what we can do together as a team as opposed to just me working on my own for the most part or just graveyard rose and i um, and that yeah very much excites me so i hope that you enjoyed this wrap up episode this goodbye to the realm if you have please do leave a like and if you look forward to seeing me starting again um, starting a whole new series on the corruption realm then please do hit that subscribe button uh, and i'll see you in the next episode but for now that's it i'm out see ya